Sabrina from Campbell's Freedom Farm. I'm out here hopefully before it gets too sunny. It's five something here. And we're going to plant some wave petunias in Stefan's vegetable garden. Why? Well, who loves aphids? Not me. Not my pepper plants or tomato plants. But the petunia repels the aphids. They cool the roots of some of the plants and they detour many other insects that are not so good. So we're going to just plop this around the garden and um, they'll kind of spread. You know how wave petunias go. They just poof, they go. So we're going to use Job's organic flower fertilizer so we get some beautiful blooms. I just wanted to show you I tried to get a petunia that matched the amaranth. I think it did pretty well. For the wave petunias, this is garden soil. So I made the hole a little deeper. I sprinkled a little of the fertilizer there. And now I'm going to put compost in here. little fertilization, mix it in, and then put this in. That way it has better soil than the regular garden soil. So, petunias, since they spread, they're really a good weed barrier as well. All right, the next one we're putting in is basil. And you're like, well, basil's really not a flower. It is. They do flower. The regular basil, once it flowers, it's pretty much done. But I am putting in Thai basil, and it has big purple blooms. I mean, it just smells amazing. Um, this is one of the basils that Taylor uses in our curries and everything at cooking at Taylor and Stefan. Please check that out. But this gets rid of aphids. You know, again, the aphid is a problem for every garden. And... I'm also putting regular basil with the tomatoes because it gets rid of the tomato hookworm. It also repels mosquitoes and other flying insects, which is great because if you're in here picking or weeding, it gets rid of those mosquitoes. I hate those things. All right, basil isn't picky. doesn't need great soil. I mean, you can. I'm going to plant it in compost because we're in a garden soil, but I'm really not going to fertilize it. Really quickly, this Thai basil, some of it I grew by seed, but um, the rest is in the video from dividing, smart buying. So I divided one and got like 10 plants, and they look great. Look at the flowers they're starting. I'll probably cut these flowers, the stems, that way it puts some growth on because I want it to go right by the peppers and over and kind of repels everything. All the onions are coming up. They actually have peppers. I should probably take that off. Okay, my old time favorite, you know, before all this really cool stuff came out, I love marigolds. Love the smell, but do you know what doesn't like the smell? Flying insects rabbits and deer that's a good bonus for looking so beautiful it also brings in the beneficial bugs ladybugs um, the mini wasp I forgot what they're called and they keep like mosquitoes away and they bring in pollinators and that's always good that um, Thai basil also brings in tons of of pollinators. I mean, the bees can't keep off of it. So, this also doesn't need a lot of soil care. I'm going to plant it because we're in just new garden soil. I'm putting it in leaf mulch, but that's all. That's all you need. Miracles are in. They're even over by the okra and what was the sunflowers. I um, left the other day after I planted them, came back, and the groundhog ate the sunflowers. I didn't know they ate sunflowers. So don't tell Stefan, but I have some 
germinating very quickly because he worked like on those forever. So anyway, marigolds can be fertilized, but not until they reach their full height. Too much nitrogen will stunt their growth and they'll just start blooming. So you have a short little um, marigold, but you want a big marigold. So those insects smell it. The bunnies smell it, the deer smell it. So if you must fertilize it, wait till it grows. That's my advice. Okay, we were all supposed to have cosmos, which is great for aphids and everything else. I only planted some cosmos in the milk jug. I already planted those. You already saw those. So you can't buy cosmos right now. I'm not sure why. Or clam. So my daughter's coming back from Washington. She had a trip up there. And um, oh, talk about beautiful, she said in the ocean she stopped and i think it was somewhere in wyoming and this nursery had tons of it so she bought a whole bunch for me so we're going to add that later on okay the next thing we're going to plant as a companion plant is not a flower it's garlic okay we're going to plant garlic now i plant garlic all season Anytime you could start working the soil, I put it in. This is another argument. Some people say, oh, you only put it in in October. That's not true. You should be able to get two crops of garlic. You plant one in the spring, and in the fall, you take that out, and then you replace it with a new one. But also, go to like Walmart. This whole bag is a lot cheaper than just going to nursery and picking up a few bulbs. And it's usually fresher. Now, garlic, onions, any of them from the Allium family will repel so many things, especially for tomatoes and peppers. I mean, the only thing you can't plant this by is pole beans. Don't do that. But I don't even risk it. I don't even put it near the bush beans. I just keep it away. So I put it around the tomatoes. But right here, the amaranth loves growing with this. So it's going to go in between each amaranth. And it's going to make like a border. Deer, rabbits, I wish groundhogs. Hate it. And um, it'll keep bugs away. I mean, it's a win-win. Plus, you eat it in October. So let's plant. All right, let me show you. Do you see how it's right in between? And all I have to do is poke a hole and just put them in. And also, for cooking, I actually cut the top sometimes like a green onion. And I'll actually add a little foliage. It'll be kind of pretty. I just want to show you, this is how I plant garlic. I just take a mallet and that's it. And then just push it in and it's done. It saves time, no digging. Right, we finished. So just because I said these are the beneficial flowers doesn't mean you can't plant other flowers. The more flowers in a vegetable patch is really important. It brings in beneficial bees, pollinators, whatever. And it brings beauty. It keeps the soil cool and weed free. So you can't go wrong. I mean, sometimes. But you usually can't go wrong planting some beautiful vegetables with beautiful flowers. So this is Sabrina from Campbell's Freedom Farm. Have a great day. Bye.